one day and a half. Uh, how they are going to look like? How they are going to look like? Uh, so first of all, I'm going to explain uh, to you, Anna, if because it's going to be difficult. No, you can you see here? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. So if you can't and you, you can move, uh, is it okay for you? Everybody can see. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first, I'm going to explain to you. The dramaturgical scheme that uh, the schema schema that yeah. my father invented, and then I'm going to explain you some problems that I see within it, and then uh, uh, I'm going to see an alternative to it that also have their other problems. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. So this is the schema of uh, uh, a forum theater as my father invented it, and for my father. Those were the main elements that you need into a forum theater. Those are the absolutely necessary elements that you need in a forum theater. Otherwise, you don't have a forum theater. In order to have a forum theater, you need to have an oppressor. The oppressor might not be the worst person on earth. He's not a sadist. He's not a, someone that enjoys necessarily inflicting pain. But he's someone that has power in order to say no to the desire of the oppressed. The oppressed is not necessarily a best person on earth, not your best mate, but is someone that have a desire, a desire that we understand as legitimate, a desire that's going to fight against the power of this oppressor, power that will say no to this desire. So the desire is uh, not getting fired, is being able to be talk inside the campus about sexualities that are non heterosexual is uh, not getting raped by the police when you're a foreigner, and so on and so on. Desires that we think that are legitimate, and desires that uh, are going to be shown in the play. Those two main characters, they can have allies, but my father stressed out that we need a clear confrontation between the main oppressor and the main oppressed. Clear? Then, uh, the story in itself, it's divided into three parts. The first, the first part, the first part, and it's not a timing question, right? It's just elements that need to be there. The first part is the counter preparation. What is the counter preparation? It's the moment in which we see what is the desire of the protagonist, of the oppressed. My father used to say many, many times, fiat of the oppressed is not fiat of the depressed. <laughs> By that meaning that we are not there to give desires to the people. We are here in order to explore alternatives, in order to try to fulfill those desires. So the desire must be shown. So, uh, but it can be very simple. Like uh, Jana Sanskriti, this movement that I've been talking about, uh, their most important play, uh, they perform it more than 3,000 times, is about patriarchy. And in the first scene, you are going to see a girl, she's studying, uh, the brother is studying by her side, the mothers ask for help in the kitchen, Ask a second time, the father arrives, takes the book out of the hand of the, the, the daughter, throw it in the, the floor and say, you, you go to work, you go to the kitchen. It was just the moment in which we saw what was the desire of the girl to keep on studying. After you have a moment that's called peripecia. Peripecia is the struggle, peripecia means in Greek, to turn things in the other uh, direction is the moment in which there is a fight between the desire of the protagonist and the power of the oppressor. At a further, in this peripecia, you need to have a Chinese crisis. What's a Chinese crisis? A Chinese crisis is, uh, maybe some of you know that because it became very famous, not because of my father, but because it's very famous. It became famous to the point that it even appeared in a Simpson episode. The Simpsons? Yeah, you know about the Simpsons. <laughs> it seems that even there is a one day that Lisa is studying and theater and uh, one of the books that she has in her hand is The Fiat of the Oppressed. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, people look for Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more important than that. But anyway. <laughs> so, Chinese crisis. Uh, why Chinese crisis? Because uh, in Mandarin and in other Chinese language, there is not only one ideogram to express what we express with the word crisis. There is several. And uh, there, there is several, no, there is two. One meaning risk, 
to the second possibility. So, uh, what the chain is prizes is the moment in which there is risks and possibilities on the table, in which the power shift is still to be uh, to be discussed. Uh, to, uh, is, uh, the dice are still rolling in the floor. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes. yes? The words is dangers and possibilities. Okay, there is people that are taping, you can tape, but you cannot put that in YouTube because maybe I'm going to make mistakes and stuff like this. So keep it as personal as possible, okay? Keep it to you. Uh, is it clear what I'm saying? So risks and possibilities, by that I mean the moment, or my father meant, more precisely, uh, the moment in which there is still things that can be done. The power structure can uh, still change. Is it clear? My father would say that the anti-Chinese crisis would be uh, a, people, a person with his hand tied, back over the wall, a fold over his eyes, 12 people with the rifles pointing at him, the captain already with the sword out saying, one, two, three, fa, stop, replace the protagonist. This person is going to die. There is no way for this person to, to be saved in this moment. So it's another moment. It's a moment in which things can be done. And this is somehow the entrance door that you're creating for your uh, inter the people that will make the intervention. That's why I put it here, the intervention. But they might, the people, your audience, think that, OK, I'm not going to get from the entrance door. I'm going to get from a window that I'm seeing here. And that's OK. But you need to create a, a, an entrance door. Is it clear what I'm telling you? Um, yeah. So just telling you, okay, the first form of theater that I remember of, it was a, a pregnant teenager that came to her mother to say, look, I'm pregnant. Uh, can you talk to dad about that? And then the mother would talk to the dad. The dad was extremely uh, conservative and the dad was going like, okay, if she is pregnant, that she's no longer a virgin. If she's no longer a virgin, she's no longer my daughter. So she needs to get out of home and ended up expelling the daughter from home. Is it clear? There's a forum theater, and in that forum theater, uh, everybody goes into the moment in which the mother talks with the father, and everybody is unable to succeed. At a certain moment, moment a woman asks, can I enter before? Can I enter in another moment? And my father said, yes, you can. And then she entered into the, in the moment in which the father of the house was coming from work, extremely tired, sitting and putting his feet like this. And then in the regular play, the mother, the actress that was doing the mother, would come and take off the shoes of, the, of that actress, uh, of the father, and put them some slippers instead. Then the woman said, can I enter in that moment? My father said, yes, you can. And then comes the guy, he sits, he makes like this, and he received the two slippers in his face. <laughs> the woman was saying basically, I, uh, what I understand from it was that if you don't change the relationship here, it's not possible to change the relationship over there. Yeah? yeah? So, uh, so you create an entrance door, but maybe the, the people will want you to enter in another point. And then there is a defeat. Why is there a defeat? There is a defeat because otherwise we would be telling to the people. If you um, do this and this when faced to that and that, then you will succeed. We are giving, giving advice to the people. We are telling what the people should do. We need to have a defeat in order to have kind of a question mark. If you were faced to that, what would you be doing? What would be your action? Is it clear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The defeat is kind of the question mark. Yeah? Okay, so that is the Forum Theater as my father planned it. Is there a question about this? Is everything clear about that? No? Um, so I'm just trying to uh, repeat to remember. So um, the first part is basically the, con basically the three main things are confrontation and then like a... Showing the desire, confrontation, defeat. Desire. Showing the desire, confrontation with the Chinese crisis, and defeat. Got it. Yeah? Other questions? No? Okay, my problem with this, uh, okay, first of all, uh, 
Uh, that works in many, many contexts. That works everywhere. But as I was saying yesterday, I don't think that one size fits all. I don't think that uh, one uh, dramaturgical structure can fit every single problem in it. There is a story by Brad, and um, it's the first time today that I'm quoting Brad, so I'm okay. <laughs> uh, a story by Brad, uh, he has uh, this alter ego that's called uh, Mr. Kerner. And Mr. Kerner one day goes to a garden that a friend of his works on it. And he goes to the garden, and when he uh, arrives to the garden, he sees his friend, the gardener, uh, sculpting a tree into a perfect sphere. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's a perfect sphere. And Mr. Kenner gets amazed and says, look, I want to do the same thing. This is beautiful what you're doing. So lend me the scissor and I will do the same thing with another tree. The gardener says yes, gives him the scissor, go to another part of the garden. And then Mr. Kenner starts cutting a tree, cutting a tree, cutting a tree, and he makes an almost perfect uh, sphere, but here on the, uh, on the top is too flat. So what he does is that he's going to cut again, cut again, cut again to make the perfect sphere. And it's almost there, but here there is a crack. So he cuts and cuts again, again. and again. But at the end, it's a, almost perfect, but here there's a hole. So it's cuts and cuts again. It's almost perfect, but here there's another problem, and another problem, and another problem, and another problem. At the end of the day, comes back the gardener, look at the tree and say, look, I can see the sphere. The problem is that I can no longer see the tree. <laughs> so from time to time, I think that we that are doing political theater, we have this, uh, this problem. We put up a form up on the problem. And if the problem doesn't fit, you know, it's a problem for the problem. It's not a problem for the form. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Who cares about the problem? The important thing is that we have a good form of theater, that we get a, have a good <laughs> epic theater, and so on and so on. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. So is this thing that I don't think that one size fits all. But then there is a specific problem for me, is that it stresses too much into the relationship between oppressor and oppressed. Between the main confrontation between an oppressor and oppressed. And I've been telling you for one day and a half already that I don't believe that this is how it works most of the time. The main confrontation between an oppressor and an oppressed. It might occur, but it's more important to understand how the oppressor got the power than just to stress out the conflict with this. By stressing too much, we are going to make a political problem like it, if it's an inter-individual problem, inter-subjective problem. And by framing the question in that manner, we are framing the answer somehow of the people. Tony, what's your favorite drink? Uh, ginger beer. Ginger beer. What's Dan? That's your name, right? What's your favorite drink? Are you in theater? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alessandra? Uh, Alexa? Alexa. Alexa. Alessa? Alisa? Mm, coffee? Coffee? <laughs> Red wine. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. I'm water too. Water too? <laughs> okay. Uh, I keep on asking the question. You will ask me with drinks. Some people will be honest, some people less. Uh, but <laughs> the fact is that you are going to answer with drinks. Nobody is going to answer me out astronaut. <laughs> Blue. Uh, Volkswagen. Nobody is going to answer that. The question frames somehow the kind of answer that you have. Uh, I remember once I was uh, in uh, Guatemala and uh, they were making a, a, a play about gang rape. So four men were going to uh, rape a woman. Stop, let's replace the protagonist. And then it was crazy, right? Because, you know, what can you do in front of four men when, you know, so it was completely berserk, and the public was berserk. Up to the moment that I see a woman that I noticed that uh, she was making very clever comments, she was very bright, she goes on stage and she starts making karate figures uh, in front of them. And at the end, because I knew her a little bit, I came to her and I said, look, but seriously, karate against patriarchy, and then she answered me back, if that is the question, that is the answer. So how to make a smart question enough so we don't reduce it to martial arts, the answer to in front of uh, patriarchy. You understand what I'm saying? Not that we should not beat 
So it's empty. Is that not that not what I'm saying? <laughs> is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. And it frames in such a way that most of the time the forum theater will be have four kind of answer and that's it. Most of the time. The first answer is the constant adaptation. Constant adaptation is the, the, the woman that puts out the cell phone. Is, you understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, with the story of yesterday. That uh, during the, the dinner time, he, she puts the phone out. Is the black person that takes uh, the, the wheel when detained. It's constant adaptation. Again, it should be done on an individual level. But in a political level, we are just saying to the people that they are responsible for their own oppression. And we are just trying to find solutions that make them in such a way that today they are not going to get killed. Today they don't get beaten up. But maybe tomorrow. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah? So that's constant adaptation. The second one is uh, uh, abstract heroism. Is the, the, the woman that picks up her luggage, slam the door, blam, because you're never going to touch me again. Where to this woman is going? How can she go? You said already that here in uh, Chicago there is not enough shelter. Does she have kids or not? Can she go uh, with those kids there? Is there a friend's house where she can go? It's completely abstract. The concrete options are not mentioned. It's only uh, stress the capacity of deciding. You can decide. It's a little bit like, uh, it's what I call Nike ideology. Just do it. <laughs> the third one is uh, what the, I would like to have a better name, so please give me the better name. Uh, it's called Eyes in the Eyes. I call it Eyes in the Eyes. And eyes in the eyes is the following. I will touch the heart of my oppressor. My oppressor will understand that he's dehumanizing me, and therefore that he's dehumanizing himself. And then he will allow my rehumanization that will rehumanize him. Don't try this at home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, again, you're responsible for, but uh, not for taking a decision, but for touching the heart. This Austrian festival that you're going to think that was the worst on earth, it wasn't, it's just a fiesta of the best festival. Uh, so it was an uh, uh, Iran group, a group from Iran, was making a play about a popular uprising that uh, occurred in Iran, and the government decided to, to shoot the people, and they were not allowed to take the bodies out. The families were not allowed to take the bodies out. So, uh, you know, Antigone, Antigone yeah. uh, 10 years ago. They make the scene, many interventions, one intervention, one actress that was a good actress or was touched, but the fact is that she goes on stage and she's already crying. Mm -hmm. She walks towards the soldier, eyes in the eyes, crying the whole time. She takes the body of the brother and leaves, always looking in the eyes, always crying, always crying. I don't know about Iran, I know about Brazil. Uh, you do that, you get a shot in your face. Yeah, so don't you? And also there is the last one, which is uh, all together now, uh, in which you know, there is an intervention, there is a problem over here, and then the guy goes to the public and say, we should do something about it. And everybody goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it started the old massive movement that we know. A guy said, we shouldn't uh, allow that. Let's do something about it. Everybody, yeah. Doesn't work this way. Doesn't work this way. Even inside an activist organization, you go and you say, let's occupy uh, the university tomorrow. And say, e, tomorrow I can't. <laughs> tomorrow I can't because I have rehearsal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So uh, it kind of frames that. It's not the only answer, but most of the answer will be this way. So what kind of dramaturgy we can find out that uh, doesn't imply that things are inter-individual relationships? And then I had to see other movies, but then I'm going to speak about just one movie, a movie that I thought that was rather amazing, 
and it's a US movie that uh, I hope as many of people will, will know or will get to know through this workshop. It's called Black Natchez. Do you know there's a movie called Black Natchez? It's made by a guy whose name is Ed Pincarius. And it's uh, Black Deacon for Defense. Uh, was that the name of the movement? Uh, Black Deacon? Well, anyway, it's a movie that occurs in Natchez. Natchez is in Mississippi, a city in Mississippi. And it's during the civil rights movement time. And the movie starts because uh, at a point, it's, it's a documentary actually. Uh, the documentary starts, we, we get to learn that uh, the local leader of the NAACP, is it it? National Alliance for the Advance of Colored People, yeah. NAACP, there was a bomb uh, in his car. His car got bombed and he's between life or death. We don't know if he's going to survive. And we, uh, we are with the local chapter, and the local chapter is trying to organize a march in front of the town hall, in the, in the middle of the city, to bring uh, their constituency to say, we are, no, we are not afraid, we are going to keep on moving, this is unacceptable. The movie starts actually with the NACCP delegation coming back and they were refused. The mayor said, no, you don't have that right. You can make it in your neighborhood, but you cannot make it in front of the town hall. The, the delegation was composed only by black men. The black woman, when they come back, they look at them and say, you wanted to go only men, because only men is serious. Because uh, then the mayor will take you seriously. And you come back with nothing at all. And you think that the next delegation is going to be like this? It's not going to be like this at all. It's going to be very different than from, from that. And so there is a first contradiction that arises within the movement. And then we are going to see a, a guy arriving with his rifle. And he says basically, if the leader dies, he's not going to be the only dying tonight. I'm going to a white neighborhood and I'm going to start shooting. You are completely crazy. What are you going to do? I'm going to do this. But what is going to happen? They're going to kill me. They're not going only to kill you. They're going to kill. Uh, I don't know how many of us, yes, but if 10 of like me rise, at a certain point they will be scared. So I'm going to die, I'm willing to die, in order to have other like me rising, and at a certain point they will be scared and they are not going to do this anymore. So there is going to be another contradiction that arises inside the movement. And then there is uh, uh, the, another guy that arrives, he's younger, he's more radical, he arrives and he says, in front of the house, he says, in front of the local chapter, he says like this, we might not have the right, but we have the legitimacy for going. So maybe they don't give us the right, but who cares? We have the legitimacy for doing it, so let's go and let's make the march in front of the, the town hall. Then there is the white allies that come. How do they fit? How can they fit? Should they be able to talk? Should they not be able to talk? To what extent? Can they talk? Are they going to be another contradiction that rises inside the movement? So the movie shows very clearly that in order to do an action that one would imagine not so difficult, a bomb under the car, we need to take reaction right now. Even for that, you need to pass through a lot of mediations. Mediation that are inside the oppressed side. Inside, there was not a single oppressor in this scene. But there was a lot of mediation inside. So what I try to propose is no longer a confrontation between main oppressed and main oppressor, but to try to propose what happens when someone tries to build up alliance. And what happens when someone builds up alliance? going to find out possible alliance. It's going to reach for possible allies. And I think there's a definition for oppressed, for the oppressed people, for one oppressed, that my father gave, that I think it's really, really good. It's in the book Rainbow of Desire. He says that every oppressed is a subversive, submissive. He's someone that wants the change and doesn't want the change at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is someone that knows the need for change and doesn't know the need for change at the same time. The two things are connected, one and the other. 
So what I propose is to create a forum filter inside. Everything is clear to you now? Yeah? Yeah? To, to create a forum filter in which inside a specific institution, like a university, like a specific neighborhood, a church, a working place, a school, whatever, a place in which people know each other a little bit, in which the relationships are a little bit organic, or it's not like the subway, the, the bus, public transport, to create a play in which there is an oppression, yes, but what we see is the protagonist going in different, uh, how to call that, social groups that compose this institution, always trying, attempting to create an alliance, and then finding out people that are in this schema, subversive, submissive, that are willing to change and are not willing to change, that understand the need for change, that doesn't understand the need for change, that have the power and that have not the power at the same time. Can I give you a specific example? Okay, let's imagine the following. So, uh, in a university, in a campus, there is a lot of rape culture. There's a woman that is fed up with that. And she wants to do something against the rape culture that exists. Because yet again, in another frat house, uh, last party, yet again, there was a, another rape. Who is she going to talk with first? Her roommate. Roommates? Friends. Friends? Female friends or? or uh, female uh, fraternity. Female? A female fraternity. In a side of female fraternity, you agree that would be the. Yeah, sorry. If she's in a sorority. If she's in a sorority. But in a more general thing, to female uh, uh, students. What does female students do answer to this? In a, in, like this. We need to make a talk about what is consent. We need uh, to have a campaign on consent in the university. What are the women are going to answer back at her in a subversive, submissive mode? Maybe something like men do not need to be taught what consent is, they'll do it anyway. No, it, subversive, submissive in the sense that she have reasons to change and at the same time she's not willing to change. I'm going to give an example from Brazil uh, and then we go back to this example. Gentrification in the favela. That occurred 10 years ago comes a guy from Norway, buys 10 houses in the favela, uh, nearby the sea, put the houses down and create a jazz club. Someone wants to do something against the gentrification of the slum. An inhabitant of the slum wants to do something. And then he's going to talk with someone from the slum, let's do something against it, and this guy will answer in this mode, subversive, submissive. How does this person answer? The guy is a mototaxi. You understand what a mototaxi is, right? And the guy said, against the gentrification? I'm making more money. You know how much a ride I, I charge? In the days that there is a show, I, I charge 20 reais. Normally, it's 4 reais. 20 reais each for a 10 minutes ride. Yeah, I'm making more money than ever. At the same time, this guy also is losing more money than ever because his rent is getting higher and higher and higher. He might be get kicked off the slum because maybe another Norwegian comes and offers money to his landlord, making a deal that he cannot refuse, and expelling the guy from the slum. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. On one side, you have a lot of things to gain, and on another side, you have a lot of things to lose. The same guy goes to the president of the inhabitants association of the slum. We need to do something against gentrification. You are not listening to a single shot. What do you want to do something against gentrification? Because of gentrification, there is no more gunshots here in the slum. See, see, there is asphalt. Not everywhere, but here there is asphalt. There is things that are improving. I cannot do anything about gentrification. But at the same time, this guy is, do, is seeing this, but at the same time he's seeing also that yes, 
the favela is getting better, but not for the favela inhabitants of before. Right, right, right. Right. Now it's people from NGOs that think it's trendy to live inside the favela. Now it's for people from other places that go to the favela. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. On one side is gaining, on one side is losing. Can we go back to this scheme over here? Rape culture in university. A woman talks with other students, female students. What they're going to answer? Yes, but. Do you think that would be something that uh, some women could say? I never heard that before. I'm very surprised. Uh, so in order to fight against rape, we should legalize alcohol, no? <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, that could be a uh, thing. Yes. What else would you say? Um, maybe if we shut down fraternities, their philanthropy will also be shut down. So in a lot of Greek life, they do like charity. Each um, sorority and/or fraternity has a charity mission. Uh -huh. Fraternity money to be here on yeah, the on the yeah, chari uh, charity charity of the fraternity. What else could be said? I know a lot of these students advise us. I won't or an angry feminist. I won't. Uh, no one will like me or I won't get a date. Or I won't get a date if I'm an angry feminist. <laughs> yes, I want to. That could be something. Yes. What if what if somebody says, well, forget their parties. Let's have our own. No, no, but uh, I want a, a subversive submissive. The, the yes and the but. The yes, I want to join in, but at the same time, it's impossible for me to join in. Yeah, but maybe if she just was mad and just pulled a line, but she doesn't. Yeah, but then you are not in the subversive submissive. The person wants to change and doesn't want to change at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that those characters do not exist. I'm saying that maybe they are not the most interesting for the Forum Theater. Yeah? So maybe she's saying something, maybe that character would be saying something more like, yes, but maybe we need to get a panel together. Maybe we need to get more, maybe we need a panel and discuss it instead of creating action. Yeah, but it's not a, not a very, look, one example, for instance, I know that there is sexism a lot in this uh, university. I know there is a lot of sexism. And that's precisely why I'm not going to do anything about it. Because I don't want to be the next target. Is that realistic? Yeah. 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 That's something that could be said. That I, I don't want to be slut shamed. I don't want to be slut shamed. If I appear as the one or fighting against rape, I'm going to be slut shamed. Is that realistic? No. I'm going to spend only two more years here. And then I'm out. I don't want to suffer those two more years. So yes, we're going to spend a lot of time, but what's going to be the outcome? I've tried it already. I've tried it already, it never worked out. I know that's a problem, but if we are the only one that thinks that's a problem, it's not going to change. Yeah, there was a, another hand uh, somewhere. So this is, uh, okay, yeah, sorry. Okay, so yes, I agree, but I'm already uh, advocating for other issues. That is realistic here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I uh, once uh, actually this is a real play that was constructed years ago in a, in a workshop, and one contradiction they sh they came up. I never thought of about this, but I think it's a very realistic contradiction. I don't know if it's a good character for forum theater, but uh, I never thought about that. Uh, basically, uh, the girl was going no 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 no. What happened last week? This wasn't a rape. This wasn't a rape. Because if that was a rape, then that wasn't a rape. In order to not recognize herself as a victim of rape, she could not recognize the others as victim of rape. You understand what I'm saying? And I have never thought about that, but I believe that it must be a, a thing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the yes, but. And then you go to another social group. Let's say the teachers. What the teachers could say to that? 
in a this year's birth. I want to help, but I don't want my job to be at risk. I want to help, but I don't want my job to be at risk. Yes, I don't have tenure yet. <laughs> what else? Exactly. That's what they came up with. The protagonist went to the most feminist teacher and was like, you know, uh, it's because of your class. It's because of your class. I understood so many things in your class. I understood uh, so many things. But those things are still happening. Last week, in one of the frat, it happened and then the teacher was... Do your friend know what is it to disclose that? Do you do you, you know what is a frost? It's precisely because she's a feminist that she knows the weight of, of uh, having, and precisely because she's a teacher that she cannot help. Yeah. Because she's a teacher, she can and she cannot help at the same time. It's like a, this exercise from before. Yeah, the power have, owns have, the powerful. We have, these, we have these trainings we have to go through every year where we watch the video and then they tell us what happens and that you're supposed to say, um, if you, you can't talk to me, but I can send you to somebody else. Mm. Yeah. So that would be, yeah, another one? It says, I'll, I'll help you, but don't tell anybody that I help you. Uh-huh. Uh, to help it, but uh, uh, not going, uh, not disclosing uh, the help. Okay. And then, again, the play becomes much more about the difficulties of creating alliance and how can we try to go over those difficulties than to fight against your main oppressor. Is it clear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? Do you have questions regarding this? Yeah. No, from that, I, I suggest, as an exercise for you guys, I would uh, suggest to not even put the oppressor on stage. Mm -hmm. Because when we put the oppressor on stage, we are trained for that. We are trained for that by Netflix. We are trained for that by Amazon or Prime and all those things. And we have those reactions. So I would suggest not even to put him on stage or her in order to understand how uh, the system as a whole work. Uh, you know, I would love to help, but at the same time, uh, I'm afraid of helping. I know that there is sexism, but I'm afraid of fighting it. I would love to help, and I understand that, but at the same time, sexism will affect me too, in a different manner. It's for me to get a job is not so, so difficult, so easy. It's my first time ever in a tenure track, and I don't want to risk it. Those things are very concrete, those things do happen. Mm. But we need to present it in a way that it's impossible to blame the people that are not uh, going to help, yeah? It's sort of like, those are potentially problems we could solve, or like, but get it around on stage, whereas the gun in your face is not. Yeah, well, the gun in the face is definitely another problem, <laughs> uh, for sure. If you can solve that, it's better to have a good discussion, a real discussion, than to have a fake solution, right? Yeah. So, uh, let, let's see where it goes. But, uh, a solution that cannot, uh, that is so weak that it cannot get up to the corner. What's the need for that? Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, my originally got interested in um, in, in theater de press was was during Occupy, and so there was a group of us, and we were doing forum around evictions, and I mean, what struck me was was Somebody took the option of, you know, we did have the oppressed in the scene. We had the, um, the police officer banging on the door to say, you know, you have to leave, you're being evicted. And, and then, but then the person in the house said, well, I'm, I'm gonna call somebody. I'm gonna, you know, call uh, one of my neighbors. And then we ended up with like a whole bunch of people inside the house. And then it did change the dynamic. But, um, but the question is how to get those people. Right, because yet right. again, it's not just, there is moment in life, and yeah. it's it just to say, yes, help, and everybody goes on stage. Uh, but, right, but they are was, not but, the majority but, but, of the moment. I mean, we did, you know, I mean, what was interesting to me was the, you know, the conversation. Mm. Is what do you say when you get on the phone and you're trying to get somebody, you know, to come over and to, to help you? To get so them. this is it. Yeah. So, so that was parallel. Yeah, it's close cut. Yeah. What was that called? What's it called? 
approach? Uh, like all together no. All together no. <laughs> right, but then the question itself. Yeah. All together no. We only. In this case, what we need to do is organize the woman's self that slaps. Which continues to blame the victim and doesn't have problems. Yeah, well, it doesn't, it's not uh, bulletproof, this thing. Uh, it's not that you, you don't have uh, things that will come up, uh, that, uh, but I think it's a question, it's not that you will have only, but I think it's a, a question that is more interesting than just what to do at the very moment in which you are confronted with your rapist. Right. It's not that there won't be people coming on stage saying, let's organize uh, self-defense groups and things like this. There will be. But also, what do you do confronted with a woman that tells you, look, I would do it, but I'm afraid of doing it. I'm afraid of doing it. Okay, in a slum. Okay, so yesterday, 24 people died in a single slum of, of Kiev. And Bolsonaro is praising the police that went over there for killing 24 people in a slum. Okay. <laughs> Dona Maria, Dona Maria, let's make a meeting. Let's make a meeting. Let's get together. We can no longer accept the police coming this way, robbing us, killing us, that matter. We can no longer accept. Dona Maria, the meeting is going to be tomorrow, 100 meters away from your house. Come. Please come to the meeting. And then we see Dona Maria. She has all the reasons of the world to go because she she can be a victim the next day. She has all the reasons to not to go. And she's unblameable. And you cannot blame her for that. Mm -hmm. But still, we need to dialogue. And we need to find ways. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand better. And we need to make the change. But it's not in a moral issue. So can a, can a, can a, faceless, can, can a faceless oppressor still be on stage in the same function as, as a non-oppressor? I think that, again, as I told you, what's the, in the scene that I said, what would be the gain of having a police officer on stage? What would be uh, concrete? If there is a gain, do it. But ask yourself, is it better to have the, uh, the and I'm asking, I'm uh, telling you seriously, uh, don't, uh, be, this is formulas because where I'm teaching, but on the real scenario, think about, you know, what's the gain that you have? Having this, having that, mixing uh, the two of them, inventing a third, that's not the, the, the question. But ask yourself, what is the kind of question that I'm addressing? Mm -hmm. And what is the kind of debate uh, we would like to have? Yeah. But, but you could have the scene, like, you know, in, just like we had the scene with the two cops. I mean, you could have the scene, you know, inside. With the two what? The two uh, cops. Cops, cops. cops. Yeah. Yes, I know the term. Yeah, but, but, you, could, <laughs> but you could have the scene, in, you know, inside the police station. I mean, you could explore that, too, what well, the dynamic. Inside the police station, you think that there is a lot of scope for, for change? I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe I'm not familiar with it. she was the advocate of the oppression in this case, so she was the person yeah. that had the... You know, again, well, there no, is I not a definitive it. answer to anything. What the, the question is, do according to the debate that you want to have. Yeah. But do know that here, you have to hear the tendency is to construct alliance. And from time to time, maybe it's not important to construct alliance. I don't know. And here, the tendency is more a direct confrontation with your main oppression. It can be useful, but from time to time, it's not. To reduce the question of domestic violence to the question of a woman and her husband is to kill the question. Is to kill the question, for instance. Yeah, uh, uh, to, uh, to propose that uh, the people will be uh, touched, you mean? Without, like, saying the cost of not organizing, right? The well, cost of not organizing yeah. is, the, is but, the oppression. But, you realize the moment. So do you put it and then go to this? Again, there is not a general answer to that. But I think that most of the time, when we perform for people that are oppressed, mm -hmm. they know already the cost. Right. You know, uh, yeah, I, I will say most of the time. I'm not saying... For, yeah. 
but many, many times, for, for instance, myself, I hate when in movies they have to show the violence that uh, political, yeah. I don't know, political, uh, my father was tortured, no? When they show torture on, on stage, I think like, you fuckers, you don't know what it is. And I don't know what it is either, but it's not what you're presenting on stage. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're not reaching there. Yeah, you know, you see on stage torture and then you go drink a beer at the end of it. It's not that you're leaving it, it's not like your experience. But I'm saying that again in general. There's a, a, a feminist in France that is saying we should stop making campaigns against domestic violence that show the face of the victims with the marks. We are just showing the power of the oppressors. We are just, you know, putting their hunting game uh, being publicized. And not, uh, you understand what I'm saying? But again, I'm not saying in general, uh, but we always try to, as Rosa Luxemburg said, to transform tactics into dogmas is the best way to create dictatorships. In theater, we are not going to create dictatorships, but we might be just ridiculous from time to time. Out, out of the point, yeah. You really get me so much. <laughs> um. I'm having another moment. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I always think when it comes to building allies that you have to maybe do something like a sales game. You have to kind of show people or slightly tilt them over to believe that there's something in it for them. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> but and it's not as easily, you know, done, you know, as No, it's not. But at least, you know, if people see the hmm yeah. we, we tend to yeah, 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 yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another quotation from Brad. Uh, activism is well understood egoism. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> 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 what she just said reminds me, so I, I am training as a therapist, and there's this really awesome therapist that I work with, and she said something to me that was very interesting. She said, you know, we have to really Church that uh, owns the vast majority of the schools over there. 
and believer or non-believer, you have to follow the rules of the Catholic school and even to go to mass, uh, the, to go to uh, how you call that, uh, uh, you, when you learn about religion, well, religion class, uh, like uh, and stuff like this. I'm not against doing it if you're willing to do it, but what they told me, that's not like this that it happened. You know, they were really imposed. And in one moment, you, you had a mother that was leaving the kid uh, for the religious school, and uh, another parent that was against uh, religious school and asked to the mother, but you, you are a believer? No, I'm not a believer, but I'm a foreigner. If I want to belong, I need to have my kid going to the religious school, to not be in another area uh, still, to be the foreigner, the guy that doesn't comply. Like this. So I want him to follow. And then there was an intervention with someone with a very concrete solution. There was some uh, that offered something to them. Let us create a network of sociability. Let our kids play together. You know, so maybe you won't have all the kids, but we will have our network of sociability. We will have our network of solidarity. And this is what we uh, are going to create. You understand? So there was something for the person uh, on this thing. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, but that doesn't sound like what you were calling submissive. No. Because it's not submitting to the church. Right. It's creating an alternative yeah. circle in which the kid could have friends, mm -hmm. uh, could do whatever he wants without being inside of the religious school. Inside the church. It, it seems to me that people are talking about solutions to problems that um. are solution, the possible ally, the actor actress that's doing it should, you know, acknowledge that it's a good thing that was brought, like uh, the person did, and not go, no, 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 all the time. But it's true that we should not be so much focused on the solutions on stage, but on the process that arrives in the audience also, the good, the good talk, the, the, the what's going to happen after. Look, uh, my last quotation of Brecht uh, before lunch, Yay! yeah. Is a, okay, so Mother Courage. I've been talking about Mother Courage yesterday. No? Uh, Mother Courage leaves the stage uh, searching for a kid that we know is dead. So she, she's blind to her own situation. And she leaves the stage like this. Brecht showed the play for the Communist Party of Germany, for people that were inside the, the Communist Party of Germany. And they look at the play and they look at each other and they came to Brecht and was thinking, Brecht, your play is amazing, it's very beautiful, but there is a small problem in it. She doesn't understand a thing during the whole play. She leaves the stage as blind as she answered. And then Brecht said, yes, it's true. She doesn't understand a thing. Maybe the audience will. Why do we believe that we need to see a process of learning on stage for having a process of learning in the audience? Why do we need good examples in order to have a good reflection on the other side? And I think it's a good question. Is that okay? Okay, lunchtime and then we create our place. Thanks a lot, see you.